Okay, <clears throat> welcome to lesson 88. And I have some pictures that might, might be how you feel um, <laughs> being cooped up inside for so long. So there you go. Maybe this is your form of entertainment. Um, maybe not. <laughs> maybe you're starting to feel like, let me outside and making faces like that. Or maybe you're just stuck in the toilet and can't get out. <laughs> Hopefully that's not you either. Um, then I have a couple more minions here. Of course I talk to myself. Sometimes I need expert advice. I think this is, would probably be your chant if you were in school right now. And lastly, never ask Google for medical advice. I've gone from a mild headache to clinically dead in three clicks, especially right now. Uh, many symptoms could lead you to having the coronavirus, so don't ask Google for that. All right, so today um, we're going to be talking, it's review, thankfully, and it's review of um, proportional and non-proportional relationships between numbers. And there's three things that you need to know about this. Um, and we'll just rehash it and then there's a new thing that you learn with this a little bit. So the first thing, when your two numbers are proportional, or the relationship between two numbers is proportional, it involves two variables. So when you're talking about an equation, is it proportional? There's two variables in there, and often what we were doing before is X and Y um, on that, but it can be any letters, any two variables. And as one of them for here, as Y increases, X increases by a, an equal ratio. Um, so pretty much as, as Y gets bigger, so does X by the same amount. Um, so if y doubles, then x would double. Um, so jumping over here, so that idea, um, all, like if you put these numbers in ratios, they're going to be equal. So I'll just pick a random number here. Um, if x is 1 and y is 4, that means if they're going to be proportional, all of them are going to have to reduce down to 1 fourth. So if x is 2, what does y have to be to be proportional? 2 eighths. 3, 12, or 16, all of these things reduce down to um, 1 fourth. So equal proportions, um, equal ratios, and which pretty much means they increase by the same amount. So if I take um, 1 and I take it to the 10th, or yeah, if I go 1, 10, uh, another 10, 20, 30, and this is 5, um, what are the bottom numbers here? They all have to reduce down to 1 fifth. So 1 times 10 equals, then you need to do 5 times 10, which is 50. 5 times 20, 100. 5 times 30, 150. If you reduce all of these back down, they all reduce back down to 1 fifth. So that's what it means by equal ratios there. Um, whatever the relationship is between the new two numbers, um, it needs to increase by the same amount. Um, one example of this is when you're talking about the perimeter of a square. A perimeter of a square, all four sides are the same, so it's four times the side. So you could ask yourself, instead of making an XY chart like we did over here, you could make a perimeter and side chart. So, and you can pick random numbers. So if I say the perimeter, I'll just fill in the side. If I say the side's one, if I say the side's two, side's three, or the side's 20, what is the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is always times four the sides. One times four. Two times four is eight. Three times four is 12. 20 times four is 160. That's not right. Who's my math teacher? 20 times 4 is 80. Okay, so what you could do, 4 divided by 1 is 4. 8 divided by 2 is 
4. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 80 divided by 20 is 4. They all come out to an equal ratio or number. Then there's the third thing, um, and that is if you put this on a graph, which I'll put my graph out here in a little bit, but if you put a proportional relationship between numbers on a graph, there's two things that they'll do. So if you know them before I write them up, and that is they're going to go through zero, zero, or the origin. It will always go through the very center of the graph. If it's not proportional, it will not go through the very center. Right where x and y intersect, it has to go through there. So it must go through the origin. The other thing it has to do is it has to be a straight line. Um, if you graph these points, they will and put a line between them, that line will be straight. It will not start out straight but then go up. Um, What's interesting is I saw a saw a joke the other day. Um, often students are like, "When are we ever going to use this?" Um, when looking at these graphing things and like it goes up and like that, and, uh, whatever else. And if you look at the news around us, we're all about this thing right here. We want this thing to be as flat as possible rather than a massive spike and then back down. So hey, there you go. You're learning about it, um, just as we are, just as we're learning about it in math class here. You're learning about it in real life. So there's a good chance you use this in the future as well. But if it's proportional, it will go straight to the origin, and it'll be a straight line. So guess what? We do not want the coronavirus to be proportional because that means it starts at zero, which it did. And it would just be a straight line, which means that from, so I'll just, let's say that this mark right here is zero. So it starts here. And if it's a straight line, unless it's going straight across like this, that's a good straight line. But if it starts here in 100 years, it'll have kept going and more and more and more and more and more people would be getting it. Um, so that's not a good thing when you're talking about a virus if people keep on getting it because it means they're not building immunity to it. Anyhow, this is a science class. So the three things, it involves two variables and as one increases, so does the other by an equal ratio. Equal ratios, this is what they look like. It's X, whatever it is, it needs to come up to either one fifth or here it's four over one. It needs to reduce down to the same equal ratio. And then when you graph it on a coordinate plane, you put it on, it goes through zero, and it goes in a straight line. So you can start graphing these things out and figure out if they're proportional rather than be just taking a blind guess and going with that. So let me take you over to um, the coordinate plane here. Okay, just kidding. Um, we won't actually need the coordinate. Uh, graph plane here. So I'm just going to jump. If you want to look through um, all the examples one through four, you can do that. Um, it's a lot of reiteration of what we already learned. So I would advise that you read over that and look at that. Um, but we're not actually going to dive into that. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the practice set to order to actually answer some of the questions that they ask us here. First question, uh, question A. It asks, in a proportional relationship, how many variables are there? And if you go back to what I just told you, how many variables are there? There's two. There's either X and Y, or there's two numbers that change. There can be another, there's another number that stays the same, which is the equal ratio, um, but there's two variables. So for letter A, there's two variables. And then it also asks you, when you graph them, the graph of a relationship, of that relationship is what shape? So if you actually graph it, you're like, oh, it doesn't make a shape. Well, what shape is this? If it goes through zero and it's a straight line, what shape is that? It's a line, yeah. So your answer for that is a line or it is linear. Well, that's, that's the shape of it. So it's a line, two variables, it's a line, 
and when one variable is zero, the other is zero. It has to be zero because if it isn't, it does not go through zero, zero. When one is zero, the other has to be zero. So those are three um, questions. Just take the information that you had learned and plug it in. Um, B, so you have an equation, they used X and Y there with K being your constant of proportionality. As X changes by one, Y changes, Y changes by a constant factor, which is K. Which of these equations is a, a direct proportion? So you have three equations here. You have Y equals five plus X. So if you would make this chart X and Y for that one. So if X is zero, y is what? 0 plus 5 equals y. It is 5. Immediately, you could be like, that doesn't work. And why doesn't it work? Because right here, one is 0 and the other one is not. That means it does not go through um, the origin or 0. So you can immediately forget about that one. It is not that equation. Um, you should know that it's this one already, but I'll just per explain to you this. So if here you have A equals base times height. So um, we're just gonna say that the base is the constant here. So you have A and H. So if the height, uh, let's just throw a number in here for base. Let's say the base is always gonna be um, four. So let me just eliminate that. Actually, no. That worked out quite well the way it was. Remember the answer for A, how many variables are there? There's two variables. How many variables are here? Well, the area is going to change. The area is going to change based off of these numbers. What is the base? Well, the base could change because the base is always changing. And what's the height? Well, the height's changing. So this is three variables. It does not work. You can't do that for a proportional equation. That will not work. So it has to be this one by process of elimination. Okay, so jumping up to C here, um, it tells you that when you divide Y by X, you get uh, the same number, regardless if it's, if it's proportional, no matter, as long as it stays proportional, Y divided by X is always gonna come out to the same number. For C here, that number is three. So whenever you divide Y divided by X, it will equal to three. So they give you three options, they give you 412, uh, 618, and 93. And they're asking you when you divide those two, if you stick it in this problem right here, they should equal three. Which one of those doesn't? Well, 12 divided by four is three. 18 divided by six is three. Nine divided by three is three. They're all equal to three. Well, whenever they give you a set of numbers in parentheses like this, the first number is always X. Think alphabetically. X comes first and then Y. So when they give you a number, it's gonna be X and then Y. They're called coordinate points. They, X will always come first. So um, when you look at it that way, Y divided by X, what's the second number in the first one? It's 12. 12 divided by four. 18 divided by six. Three divided by nine is what they come out to. Three divided by nine is one third, not three. So this is the one that's a problem there. The other two do equal out, that one doesn't. Then D there, which of the following is not an example of proportional relationship? So here you have um, three things and you need to figure out which one is not proportional. So the first one is the distance and time when driving at a constant speed. You hop in a car, uh, so let's say the distance is equal to, let's just pick a safe speed. Let's say it's 40. 40 miles per hour. So it's 40 miles per hour that you're traveling and then time. So you have to figure out, is this a proportional relationship? Well, let me ask you a question. If you would make a chart with distance and time and make this go out, if you go, if you drive for zero hours, how far did you go? Well, zero times 40 is 
zero. So it pa passes the first test because it needs to go through the origin, which is zero to zero. If you pick a random time, if, I, if you went driving for two hours, how far did you go? Two times 40 is 80. Okay. Um, if you went driving for, say, five hours, five times 40 is 200 is your distance. Now, do these things all come out to the same ratio? Right here you have, it goes through zero, zero, so you're good there. How many variables is there? T is one, D is another, 40 is a constant, so you're good there. Now, is it an equal ratio? What is 80 divided by two? That is 40. What is 200 divided by five? That is 40. So there you go. Um, it would come out to a straight line, and this is good. So A checks out. B, you have the quantity and price when the unit price stays the same. So what that's saying is if you went and some for a random, I don't use toilet paper since that's a hot item recently. Um, if the cost is equal to, um, I'll just give you an example. There was one store that I went to, they were selling the paper by individual rules and it was approximately uh, I'll just use one dollar for reference per toilet paper roll so the cost was equal to one dollar times the toilet paper roll well let me tell you this make a chart here if I bought zero if I went in that store and I bought zero toilet paper rolls how much money did I spend zero toilet paper rolls is going to cost me zero dollars correct Okay, so if I bought one toilet paper roll, how much would it cost me? Approximately $1. If I bought 50 toilet paper rolls, how much would it cost me? Approximately $50. That one's pretty simple. One divided by one is one. 50 divided by 50 is one. It goes through zero, zero. There's two variables, no more, and it comes out to an equal ratio here. Um, it reduces down to the same thing. So this thing checks out, which means you wouldn't even have to look at C. I mean, you know that's a problem, but the reason it's a problem is because it says the hours awake and hours of sleep and the number of hours in the day remains the same. So what your equation would be, I have to think here a little bit. So the hours always stay the same. How many hours in the day are there? 24. So if you're awake for, uh, Let's just use A for a week. So the hours that you're awake is equal to 24 minus the hours that you're asleep, right? Okay, so um, awake hours compared to the sleep hours, make a graph there. So if you're awake zero hours, how many hours are you asleep? 24, right? Obviously, if you're sleeping for um, 24 hours, you're awake for zero. So right there, you can immediately say, well, that's a problem because you do have two variables that works. Um, it does not go through zero, zero. It does not go through the origin. And if you kept going with that, if you're awake for 10 hours in the day, how many hours did you sleep? You slept for 14. If you're awake for 14 hours, that means you were sleeping for 10 hours. 10 over 14 is 5, 7. 14 over 10 is 7 to 5th. They don't come out to the same thing, so <clears throat> C does not work out there. Okay, I'll do the last couple um, practice set here. For E, you have some graphs there, and they want to know which one, A, B, or C, is, the, is a proportional relationship. It's really quick and easy now to figure this out because there's two things that need to do on a graph. It needs to go through the very center, right where X and Y intersect. It needs to go through there. It needs to be a straight line. Which one goes through zero, zero? A does. The rest don't. Which one is a straight line? A and B, but B does not go through zero, and C is curved, so it doesn't work. Um, so you have um, A would be the correct answer. <clears throat> and then if you look at uh, practice set F there, all of those 
down. C does not have um, just two variables. It has three in there, the perimeter, the length, and the width. Three of them doesn't work. For B, you have area and psi. That works out. A, you have D, distance, and time. That works out. Um, but the thing is, you don't, so for A, if you put D equals 30T, make a chart here, you go zero, zero, zero for distance, you have to put zero for time. That works. If it's one, two, three, one in for uh, T, you get 30 for distance, 60, 90. That all comes out. 30 divided by one is 30, 60 divided by two is 30, 90 divided by three is 30. That works out. The other one, um, area equals S squared. So if you go area and S, if you have zero for S, what do you get for area? Zero squared is zero. That checks out, it goes to zero. If you have one for S, one squared, one times one is one. That checks out. Put two in, two squared is four. Now you start seeing the breakdown here. When it goes through zero, one divided by one is one, four divided by two is two. It's not the same proportion though. So, all right, that wraps up for today. And hopefully that made sense without being too complicated. Have a good day.